think you need fire to get plastic chunks from cash cards. Okay, we'll try that. Um, I don't know why you need that when I have a knife, but okay. We can, we can do this. What is this in my fire? A burnt wood panel. That'll do. Start a quick fire with our matchbook. And try drop cash cards again. And the bubble wrap as well. Cut up bubble wrap. So I don't have the op, and we didn't get any plastic from the bubble wrap. So I can't take apart the cash cards. Um, I have a cutting tool, I have fire, and I have the soldering iron. So my guess is that they just can't be disassembled. Uh, let me look at the cash card. Cash card. Do, do, do disassemble. Okay, it doesn't give me any options. That's fine. Just drop, drop this stuff. It doesn't matter. We don't necessarily need to do this right now. Drop the light strip. Keep everything else. Plastic bottles. Oh, yes, of course. All the containers. I did not think about that. In fact, we have empty plastic bottles. Plastic straws. Oh, because we just dumped our kitchen here. We didn't actually sort everything. So take some plastic bottles. Thank you. That'll do for sure. So cut that up. One chunk. How big is a plastic chunk? Uh, no, don't put down my visor. Activate the soldering iron. Repair our tonfa. Oh, right. Our fab still sucks. So that's not going to happen anyway. Okay, well, that was a waste, waste of our time. All right, well. We'll level up our... You know, we were going to go up and just check some of this random stuff up here. Let's just spend a little time in here. Let's finish grinding our fab. We'll continue making knitting needles. Uh, which is not going to level us up, but it'll get us close. Going to sleep. My head is in pain today. Have a good sleep, every human. Goodbye, eight leg. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you had a good time. Hope you feel better. And I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you around. So we did not level our fab, which is expected. We didn't have that much wood. Let's go next door. Hmm. Give me a plank. I'm gonna take a plank with us, so I'm not smashing. Uh, can't fit the tonfa. Okay. Well, we'll go around back because we really don't want to end up fighting an enemy. But anyway, we'll go next door to the other duplex and gather more wood. Gonna need splintered wood for uh, for the knitting needles and things. Uh, you know, and we can take basically everything with us, so we don't need to be too, you know, concerned about picking up extra items along the way. We do need to watch our stamina as we smash. Get our heartbeat under control collect the wood and things ignore please don't come over here top zombie I don't have any interest in fighting you you learned something so not completely wasted I guess if you're an optimist I am definitely not an optimist so when I say I wasted time oh boy I wasted time grab everything smash up the desks Smash it up. Um, and that should be that should be fine. Get our stamina back. Haul all this garbage next door. We're going to take all the rags with us. It's going to slow us down. Uh, so maybe we won't take all the rags with us. But we'll take some. Same with the books. We don't really need them. But whatever. Grab um, just like 60 rags out of there. So that it slows us down a little bit less. So that would be... Yep. And we'll just haul the rest next door. Well, still quite a lengthy period of time to move. We don't have a proper timekeeping source, which is um, something I don't usually think about because usually every character has a cell phone or something on them. But of course, we started as a prisoner, which uh, would not have access to a cell phone. Prisoners are permitted to have watches, um, but I don't think we saw any watches. Uh, and I did see a short hair cat in our apartment here, but I'm not super concerned about that either. Zombie spotted. Um, I can't see it on the minimap. It looks far away. Please don't come over here and murder me. I gotta remember to close my front door when I'm not doing things. Drop uh, the plank. Shut the front door. Wield the tonfa. And sort our zones so that the wood comes up here to where we're going to be crafting. Should be a fair bit of splintered wood, which will let us keep making knitting needles. So let's grind our fab. P-fab. Knitting needles. We'll make like 
four more should do it, I think. Oh, I haven't grind, grinded skills in a while. Is becoming trivial. Uh, and let's go see if we can get one more fab. Uh, and we can swap to books maybe if we find we're struggling or anything. And I'm trying to remember what I usually make. I think the die staff and spindle is what I usually make. Uses planks though, unfortunately. Go ahead and make 10 die staff and spindle. Oh, so what else is going on with me? I mean, again, pretty boring day-to-day -day life. I've really been craving playing some World War II games and have been disappointed I can't uh, really seem to manage to do that. Um, so that's been on my mind a lot lately, which I know is not super interesting, but, you know, you get a craving for something, and then you're like, you know, when you can't get it, it's pretty unsatisfying. So there's been that. I have been playing a lot of Rocket League, in my downtime because it's a very quick game. Um, so like uh, when I'm working on other things, like last night I edited and exported like nine videos or something. And um, like after every one, I would play like a quick game of Rocket League, which takes, you know, five to 10 minutes. And it's just really nice to have something that's such a short period of time that I can just quickly bang out and, and feel like, okay, I got a moment of relaxation in between the work. That makes it a lot more tolerable. Really enjoy Rocket League. Definitely a lot of tryhards in that game, but uh, what are you gonna do? And uh, yeah, I've been writing some, doing that kind of stuff uh, in my downtime, editing uh, stuff that I've written. Uh, did I, I? I must have hauled the chunks down here. We have Fab 3. I bet we can repair the Tonfa at least a little bit. Uh, at such at, Because we already have such a high... It's not that damaged. And our skill is acceptable enough that I think we can do it. So let's uh, hit the soldering iron again. Tonfa. Ooh, that's tight, but we'll try it. Please don't fail. Please don't fail. It's taking a long time. I bet we fail. We ran out of charges in our soldering iron. Okay, um, let's not do that. That still feels a little bit risky. Drop the chunks. And I really don't want to continue grinding skills. Uh, pay fab. Wood smoother takes eight minutes. Isn't it just... I mean, I guess, okay. It takes three planks, though. Ten minutes. Something that doesn't take very long. Five minutes. No, that's not high enough skill level. Takes two planks and an hour, no. Five planks in six minutes, 12 planks in six minutes, three planks in eight minutes. So I think we'll go with that. And we'll just make, geez. Yeah, spend an hour making wood smoothers. Um, I think, what else? I mean, I, I just, I don't do that much in my day-to-day -day life. Yes, keep going, please. Um, so I don't have a lot going on playing Rocket League. I, I enjoy Rocket League. I know it's like a six-year-old game, but, uh, oh, I think it's free, by the way, if you're watching this and you haven't played Rocket League. I think it, uh, this, like a month ago, it went free on Epic or something like that. Um, and it's free to play now. Obviously, it has a lot of microtransactions, which I think are terrible, but, uh, I think it's free to play now if you're interested. It's not available on Steam anymore. I bought it a long time ago and just never played it. But yeah, I think it's free on Epic. My, maybe it's not Epic. I don't really remember. Um, but there are definitely like huge banners in the game that say it's now free to play. So it's going free to play this summer. So should be uh, should be something if you never played it. Definitely check it out. It's a good game for kids, I, th I think. Like if my niece was just a little bit older, I think she would really be into it. Um, my brother and I had a conversation, so my niece came over this weekend, and my brother and I had a conversation about video games, because he was trying to, he asked me, he bought an Xbox One, he's like, hey, do you have any kids games? And I was like, no, <laughs> like I have The Witcher, which is not for children, and, and lots of games that are, you know, for teens and adults. Um, and we were talking about games that might be good for her. I think she would like Rocket League if she was just a little bit early, older. I think she lacks hand-eye coordination. We tried to get her playing Mario. She just could not comprehend jumping and landing on things' heads. Like, she can't get the speed right. So she'll over-jump and then try to jump back and over-jump and try to jump over and over-jump every single time. So if she can't handle Mario, she probably can't handle hitting soccer balls with a car. 
but uh, whatever. She had a birthday recently, so we had a cake over the weekend. Uh, she's seven now, which uh, is old. Is older than, than I expect. She was born right around the time that I came back and was living here again. So it's kind of weird to look back and say, like, it's been seven years. But, uh, but, yeah, I think she's seven. I actually don't. I'm a bad uncle. I don't, I don't know. Let's continue making some wood smoothers to try and get one more fab level. Need to get Viva Pinata. Yeah, that's literally on my list. Um, I played that a lot. So that game came out. I was in high school, I think, when it came out. And I uh, was seeing a girl. Of course, I was dating a girl. We dated for years. And she had a younger sister who was like 10, 9, 10. She really liked Viva Pinata. Um, so, like, literally, that was my first go-to when I thought about kids' games on the Xbox. Um, I actually kind of liked that game, too. It was, like, cutesy and obviously for children, but there weren't a lot of games where you could, like, be a gardener, basically. Um, this was before Stardew Valley, of course, and Harvest Moon went a long time between releases and just hasn't been very good for many years. Um, so I actually really liked Viva Pinata, despite being a grown-ass man, so... Plus, we would play, I mean, like I said, back then, we were, I was in high school, me and my girlfriend were in high school, and her sister was like 10, so we would all sit and play games. In fact, that's another game, um, I recently secured the PC version of Condemned, which was one of the very early titles, <clears throat> very early titles for the Xbox 360, and I've just been looking for it for years, uh, when I would go to game stores and stuff, I would always look for it. And could never find it. And then I finally was just like, just buy it for the computer. So I have that now. Uh, and we used to sit, that same that same girl, we would sit in the middle of the night at her house and play Condemned. And she would get super scared. And then she didn't want to play, so she wanted to watch me play. And they would jump out at you. And they were like drug addicts and stuff. So, yeah, I've been uh, going down the nostalgia track a little bit lately with uh, Xbox games. Having a good time. Okay, how is our fab? So close. Uh, P fab. Just make a few more wood smoothers. Three more wood smoothers. That should do it. I really liked Condemned as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty... My tastes in video games are pretty wide. I like most games that I play. I'm definitely a critic, so I will complain about things. But that doesn't mean I actually don't like those things. So like uh, earlier, I mentioned someone was working on zooming in and out of the map uh, in Cataclysm. And when they kind of announced this and they were talking to me about it, um, I was pointing out some of the issues that might come from the work that they're doing. And I think they took it like I was insulting what they were doing. And that wasn't my intention. It's just I'm a critic. So like my first thoughts are like, what is everyone else going to say? How are people going to react to this? What are conceivable problems with this? Even though I like the work that they were doing, my instinct is also to be like, yeah, but what about this, you know? So, uh, I like most games, but I do complain about a lot of things, which uh, I know some people absolutely hate. Okay, we should now be able to safely do this. I imagine that the final, we need, uh, give me a light battery, I guess. Um, with this final skill level, we should probably have a very low failure chance, so we should be able to spam this until we actually succeed. Reload the step away from the pile. Reload soldering iron. Great. Activate. I don't have the plastic chunks. Chunk. Chunk. Plastic chunks. No, do not step into the fire. That would be bad for you. Activate the soldering iron. Repair. Tonfa. Yes, 6% success, 0.2% failure. Please don't fail. You improve your tonfa. Excellent. Excellent. It, we And for the record, we this whole time had a second tonfa that we could have just picked up. But uh, I prefer to repair things. Just because um, it's the apocalypse. You never know when you're going to be able to find another copy of something. So you would try... I would think, from a roleplay perspective, you would try really hard to maintain your items as long as possible. Hmm. Let's head back out a little bit longer. I think we're getting to the point where we're probably going to wrap the stream in like 10 or 15 minutes. So 
Let's um, just poke our head up here. We, we're not really coming up here to explore per se. We're just coming up here to kind of poke our head around at the street level and see what's lingering about and whether or not we can kind of safely squirm our way in there. Because we would like to hit some of these restaurants and things um, early uh, and get to these hardware stores early for the tools and the perishable food before the perishable food would go bad. Um, and a hardware store just opens up a lot of possibilities because it will give you basically everything you need to succeed. So let's head through the forest. Try to avoid the main roads. And hope nothing really scary comes roaring out of the forest at us. Okay. So we're at a house. And we're at the corner. Okay. Let's have a, have a sip of our still kind of warm tea. Not, not really doing it for me at this point. Ugh, and definitely needs more sugar next time. I really ought to buy some of those, um... When I was a kid, my, my grandmother always had those sweetener packets. What, what are you that are running from me? Possums. The Virginia possum, a small omnivorous marsupial, native to North America, uh, about the size of a cat. That is incorrect. I've never seen a cat as big as the possums I've seen. Although, I guess I don't know Virginia possum, per se. Hardly, hardy and adaptive, and a fairly common sight in urban areas. You guys see possums all the time. They're about the size of my wiener dog in general, and many of them are quite fat because they eat a lot of the garbage and stuff from the neighborhoods. Uh, but anyway, a bunch of corpses is concerning. Probably, possibly Amigo or something out here. I'm a little concerned about this, that there are corpses. It's possible they stepped on something and bled to death, but... I don't see anything that would have done that. So let's back up and just hope nothing like Amigo doesn't come out of the woods here. My grandmother always had sweetener packets and I hated them because they didn't taste like sugar. Everyone says how sweeteners are like, they're, oh, they're so sweet. It's like 20 times sweeter than sugar, but it's less bad for you. One, when I was a kid, they had things on them that said they could potentially cause cancer. So I don't think that they're actually better for you. And two, they don't taste sweet at all. They taste like chemicals. And yes, they give a vague, if you put them in something like a jug of tea, it gives you that vague taste of like sweetness on your taste buds, but you can taste the chemical. Like they don't taste sweet. They taste chemically to me. I've always hated artificial sweeteners. Doesn't matter, uh, sweet and low. Yeah, the little pink ones I think were sweet and low. But like, it doesn't matter what they are because all of them taste the same. And then you add other stuff. Like I, I was in high school and there was this kid, uh, he was always dieting and stuff. And he said about how, oh, I made brownies with artificial sweeteners. And then we found out that actually if you cook that particular artificial sweetener, it becomes poison. So he tried to poison us essentially with his artificial sweeteners. Uh, accidentally, of course, but like, it's just one more thing, like, why are you putting stuff in your body that the packaging says maybe causes cancer in rats, and if you cook it or heat it too much, it becomes toxic? That sounds horrible. Um, so I keep meaning to pick up a pack and give it a shot, because it's been years since I really tried sweeteners, you know, chemistry has come a long way, and taste buds and all that stuff, you know, have changed over the years, but like... I hated them so much when I was a kid. My grandma always had artificial sweeteners. She was uh, always worried about her weight, my grandmother. Um, so she was always uh, complaining about her weight. She was always trying to diet and things, and it just never really worked for her. She was a, a big lady for most of my life. Um, and then I think we talked about it a couple, like a year ago. She had had uh, weight loss surgery which was like a, a big deal for her, something she'd wanted for a long time. So I was thinking that only a few were going to come out of the woods. Now that I'm looking, there's actually an enormous number of enemies, uh, I guess, generated from this graveyard. And they're migrating towards us, so I think, honestly, we should just leave. There's no reason for us to fight these enemies. I think we should just leave. Which is disappointing, because they're flooding into the area we wanted to explore. So... Yeah, just gonna head back to base and um, kill any that follow us all the way back, so. Exploring is a no-go. Sorry. Sorry, internet.
Uh, Splenda is the better tasting one. Saccharin still tastes bad. I'm my brain says aspartame. I don't know if that's an artificial sweetener or if I'm just plugging in words from other parts of my brain, but I kind of think aspartame was the one my friend cooked and it it was poisonous uh, when you when you bake with it. We also walked out here like an idiot, so we because uh, I was looking at chat while I was walking, so we picked up a few stragglers here we might have to kill, which is not great, but whatever. It is, okay. Yeah, I thought aspartame was, was what I was thinking of. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't really know the different sweeteners. I know there are a lot of people who drink diet soda and they put, you know, artificial sweeteners in their tea and coffee. So it's one of those things, it's like, obviously a huge portion of the country takes in those artificial sweeteners on a daily basis. So how bad could they be really? Um, so I just need to give it a shot. Uh, and that was part of like when I was thinking about getting the coffee maker to make my tea uh, I was like I should get some sweetener packets as well that way I don't have like a jug of sugar or something sitting in my bedroom where ants or whatever could come in the window and and get into because like I don't like keeping food in my in my bedroom so and sugar is one of those obviously ants love sugar so hmm uh, well we can't explore up there just because of the monster density there's a good chance they will follow us out this direction so they they would seem to be coming from the cemetery they would likely follow us because many of them had sight on us and some of them are going to be making noise which will draw other ones etc so i think they're going to end up migrating to this area so we might still be able to slip up from like the main portion of town and hit the hardware stores but that's like a really involved process that's one of those things that's like we're not going to do that today. Um, and there's really nowhere else I want to go or can go very quickly. Laundromat would be a good place to pick up more plastic. And the gun, sh gun shop and doctor's office also are deep enough in town that it's probably going to involve some, some maneuvering and probably clearing out quite a lot of enemies. I think we just call the stream here. Honestly, it seems like a natural-ish stopping point. Oh, not quite two hours, though. So, um, if you're watching on YouTube, probably going to get a short episode or two. Sorry about that. But, um, yeah. it's Plus, it's hot in here. I'm just, honestly... I've been drinking hot tea in a hot room with the sun beating down on me. So, from this uh, lovely window over here, that seems to always be facing wherever the sun is, no matter what time of day it is. But, anyway. So, everybody, hey, thanks for coming out, uh, including the deranged optician and Nico Girl, people in chat that I, I don't really uh, see very often. So, thanks to everyone who came out. Thanks again to the deranged optician for the follow. And uh, I'll be back with more Cataclysm on Thursday. Got to go tonight and work on my episode of Experimental Cataclysm for YouTube. So, everybody, thanks for stopping by. I will be back later and uh, see you next time.